tag match that we had stored away on videotape, Dave. Now is the time. The King Jerry Lawler, Sweet Brown Sugar going against beautiful Bobby Eaton and his partner Sabu. You have got to take a look with us. Asking for a chair. Remember, no disqualification. Nail Sugar and Lawler in the midsection with it. Goes after Sugar. There's the five-minute call. And Eaton has just bowled him over. They're down on the concrete. Look out. Sabu nailing Lawler, the referee trying to get a little order in this no disqualification match. It's hard. Eaton slams Lawler's head right down on that rope standard. Beautiful Bobby loves this. Let me tell you, he gets you going and he will murder you. He throws that rope standard in the ring, and he has in mind, Sabu gets that and knocks Sugar off his feet. Now Eaton takes it. Lawler picked up, center of the ring. And he slams Lawler right down on top of it. Oh, boy. Well, the only thing I can say, nobody expected it to be a wrestling match. The referee pushed down. That could cost Eaton. Carl Fergie holds the chair up while Eaton slams it, slams the head against it. Sugar and Sabu down on the floor. And Eaton really getting vicious with that chair. the top rung of it against Lawler's throat, and the referee finally pulls it away from him. And Calhoun gets it out of the ring. How long? I don't know. We're seven minutes into it, and Jerry Calhoun nailed by Eaton. But no disqualification doesn't mean that he can do that to a referee get away with it. He may not get a disqualification. Carl Fergie slams Brown Sugar in the head with a chair and Eaton bounces. Uh-oh. Eaton's trying to pay Lawler back. Lawler slammed into that table. the referee. Referee finally gets eaten off of it. And Calhoun. Whoa, and Calhoun almost took a shot. He got part of it and eaten, banged him in the back. So this is one that no referee wants to be a part of. Eaton trying to pay Lawler back for the action of last time they met. Sugar and Sabu down on the other side of the ring and Lawler is pile-drived onto that chair. Eaton had the chair laying on the floor of the ring and he pile-drived Lawler right on top of it. Choking, sweet brown sugar. Eaton covers Lawler up. The referee kicks the chair out one. 
Shooter grabs him and pulls him away so that a three count did not take place. Shooter is still determined. And Lawler, it's hard to say. This is as much punishment as I think we have seen Lawler take in a long, long time, if not ever. Ten-minute mark. No time, no disqualification. What a wild one. I mean, in your wildest dreams of a battle, you never saw anything like this. Eating just nailed sugar with a collar of Sabu. He rolls sugar over, puts Sabu on top of him. Lawler has gone after Fergie. Here goes Eaton after Lawler. We'll have to look at the tapes to see Eaton and Lawler back there. Eaton gets the referee, brings him in the ring. Sabu gets a three count, and that's going to be it. 15 minutes and 50-something uh, seconds. 13.57, the official time. The winners will be Sabu and Bobby Eaton. Here comes Lawler. Grabs Eaton by the hair, grabs the chair. Carl Fergie in. Carl's got powder and throws it in Sugar's eyes. Waller nailed by Fergie. Remember, Lawler and Fergie are cousins, but I never saw cousins fight like that. There goes referee Jerry Calhoun out, and here comes Jimmy Hart. He's smearing something in Lawler's eyes all over his face. Hardy, who hasn't made an appearance tonight, while they're holding Lawler. Hart rubs it all in his face, all over. Yeah, <laughs> I told you. Did you ever in the world see anything like that? Mm. And here come two of the gentlemen, maybe the only two gentlemen that were involved in that action out there. The King Sweet Brown Sugar. And, and I tell you, when I look back at that tape, it's about the third time I've seen it. I still don't see how anybody survived that one. Well, it wasn't a, it wasn't a pleasant uh, sight to see again. It was, without a doubt, the, one of the roughest matches, Lance, that oh. I have ever been involved in. I noticed on the end, you know, on the end of the film, you seem to... Uh, kind of cut away fairly quickly when the heart ran out and they put some black stuff all over my face. And I'm sure that, uh, I'm sure that Hart did this thinking that, you know, he was going to humiliate me and uh, make me mad. Well, I'm already mad at Hart. He doesn't have to do anything to make me any madder at him. But I just want to say that, you know, it's just another, it's, it's another time that Hart has shown how simple-minded he really is, how stupid that the man really is, because I, I just want to say something, Hart. I know you think you're going to humiliate me and you think you're belittling this man right here by putting black on my face. And, and, and maybe I shouldn't say this, but I think some things like this, Lance, there's times that it, that it should be said, you know. I want you to realize, Hart, that, that, you know, it's not what's on the outside of a person that makes a guy a man. It's what's on the inside. And I want to say this. You see, I don't, I don't like this man, and I don't have this man for my partner because he's black or because he's white or anything because of what color he is. It's because of, it's because of what's inside of him. That's what makes him a man. Now, Hart, you see, it doesn't matter what color he is. It doesn't matter about you either, Hart, because I would hate you even if you were green. You understand what I'm saying? So all I'm saying is this. You didn't humiliate me, but I was already mad at you, and I promise you this. I promise you, 
as I've made a lot of promises in the past, I've kept a lot of them, and I'm going to keep this one. Hart, one of these days, I'm going to get even with you, brother, and, and we're going to put a hurting on you that you have never had in all your life. That's all I'm saying. Okay, well said, Jerry. Uh, we'll be looking for you and Sugar to come back and talk with us about your match a little bit later, That'll okay? Fine. Thank you. We'll okay, back. fine. Right now, we're going to take time, and then we'll be back. Originally coming into the area, and stopping off as we promised uh, before the program that we would give Jimmy Cornett and Jesse Barr uh, a moment before the match started. Philip Rougeau is the the uh, contestant today for Jesse Barr. And what you have on your mind, Jimmy? Uh, Mr. Russell, I know I don't usually have a whole lot to say, but I've got some things on my mind that I have to get out right now. Okay, fair you enough. Know, I, I've been wrestling since I was five years old. It's no new sport to me. And, well, most kids were out playing with their toys or chasing girls or what the case may be. I was out training hours and hours every day to wrestle. You know, that was the most important thing to, in my life was to become a professional wrestler. And I trained for the Olympics. See all these medals? These are I, real medals. I know. It took hours and hours and hours to get these medals. And I was taught to have respect for the rules and stuff. And since I've turned professional, nobody seems to have any respect, especially in this area. And the worst one of them all, I wrestled last week here, and that's uh, Dutch Mantel. Well, the you know, Dutchman is a little free sometimes. No, he doesn't. He doesn't know what a rule is. If somebody gave him a rule book, he'd probably use it to wipe his table off with. He doesn't know what a rule is. If I was to wrestle him in a match, stipulating that if he broke any rule, I'd win the match, he'd have about as much chance of beating me as a snowball would have in hell. Yeah, I'm talking, I'm talking don't get hot. Hey, come hey, on. Hey, hey, come and let on. me tell you something. Hey, you hey, talk hey. about me. You don't talk behind my back. If you got something to say, not... to, say it to my face. Now, what are you saying out here? I'm saying that you you can't hold one rule. You you can't wrestle one match oh, you so? without breaking the rule. I'm saying well, you don't even know what the rules are. I guess you do, right, boy? Yeah, I know. I what guess the rules you. Are. The, I guess you're the great the rule keeper, rule right? I go through the. I know every rule. Well, in the I book. hate to come out here, but this guy here, I'm sure that you are a great amateur wrestler, but I can wrestle without without breaking the rules. No, you can't. Uh, you don't think so? No, I don't think so at all. Well, I think I can, uh, boy. Well, let's get up in the ring well, there. Hey, come on, now. Ring, no, no, come don't on, let's stop. Guys, well, settle your, hey, don't push settle your personal arguments later in if, here. If you break yeah, one on. rule, I'm the winner of the match. Wait a minute. What are you talking Eddie, about? You want to have a hair, a punch, a scratch in somebody's eye? Don't get in my face. Don't get in my face. Wait a minute. Please. We already got the TV program lined up, man. So y'all just get this. We got the show. He can't wait unless he breaks the rules. Well. You're allowed, Mark. Hey, let me, let me, let me, let me, let me, hey, wait, let me say one thing. I got a match coming with you, Bar, and the winner gets a shot at the Middle America Dollar. You're supposed to wrestle Philip Rougeau today, right? That's right. But I'll take his place, and I'll tell you what. We'll wrestle it your way, and I'll show you that you can't beat me no matter what you do. We'll wrestle any way you want to wrestle. Yeah. yeah. All right, let me, let's make it like this. Wait a minute. You break one rule, I'm the winner here. Huh? You break one rule, I'm the winner. Well, wait a minute. If you pull my hair, you lose, right? That's right. But if, if you, you gouge me, you lose. If you kick me, or if you hit me, or you break any rule, and if Cornet even as much as breathes on me, you will lose the match. Is that the way you want Eddie Let us have the match? Come on, man. Yeah, but it works both ways, and you're going to be the loser. Uh, okay. Any way you, you want, want the match. Hey, yes, I want the match. Get up the ring. Get up, because we got to get... We just get out of here. We'll have a match. We're going to change it. He'll take Rujo's place. Okay, uh, Dutch Mantel, Jesse Barr, and... Uh, I can't say that I'm sad about it. I saw these guys go to a draw in a dynamite match. Uh, they have no love for each other. Uh, so let's have the introductions, Dave. All right, introducing from uh, Portland, Oregon, at 245 pounds, Jesse Barr, and going against him from Oil Trough, Texas, the Dutchman, Dutch Mantel. This match, uh, one fall, 15-minute time limit, and the referee is Jerry Calhoun. Bell time, and here we go, kind of an unusual start, and I and I really am delighted to see this, because uh, let me tell you, this bar, you're going to see, he is some great amateur background that he has. The interesting thing that I don't think that uh, Barr really knows, Dutch can wrestle too. I mean, he is not just a rough, he is a roughneck. Look at that, he goes in for the leg dive, Dutch. Hooks him with that front face lock, Dave, and back into the corner they go. Good clean break. There's Cleveland. Yeah. Cornet leading the uh, leading the applause. 
Down behind. Takes Dutch off his feet. Goes in for the ride. And Dutch trying to sit his way out. Back up on his feet with the arm. Of course, not using amateur rules. I don't, didn't mean to imply that or confusing it. It is simply that if anybody breaks one of the existing professional rules, he is automatically a loser. Barr has said that Mantel can't go through a match without breaking rules in there, and they're setting about to prove a point. Exchanging a little, a little conversation up there. They're both wanting to haul off and bust the yeah, other one right in the mouth. <laughs> Look at that move with Barr. Goes in. Really a tight arm bar that Jesse has on there. Taking the elbow back. Dutch coming up to relieve some of it. Center of the ring. Dutch goes for the leg. Barr slips it back. Referee Jerry Calhoun calls for the break and gets it. All right. I like that. Yeah, Barr going for the, uh, for the pressure hold. Something that uh, would put Dutch in a position that he might instinctively uh, take a swing at him with a right hand or something like that. We never made any bones about uh, Dutch, uh, but I think the confusing thing maybe in Barr's mind is that Dutch is just a rough neck, long way from it. He can flat wrestle and very fast. And on the other side, I think we've seen Barr uh, pop some people back on the ropes a couple of times, too. Big shoulder. Reverse. Hip toss. Fired right over to the ropes, and the Dutchman having some problems with Oregon's great amateur champion who has long since been a professional. Two and a half minutes gone, and I don't think a rule's been broken yet. Not yet, no, sir. They're both sticking right to their word. And look at Jesse move in and under with that arm. Goes to the wrist. Uh-oh. You see that? Mm -hmm. Just like you were pointing out, Jesse putting the heat on that wrist, and Dutch instinctively double that fist up. Catches himself. Crowd getting in behind Dutch Mantel. Ah, ha, ha, Dutch. Jimmy Cornette jumping up immediately, saying he's pulling hair. He did not. He started to, it looked like. He's into a headlock, but he's thrown off. Look at that leap. Both of them with some good balance showing there. Dutch hold it onto the ropes. Barr was set, but he did not commit himself to a drop kick or anything like that where he was up in the air and in trouble. Dutch reaching out, flat of the hand, takes that arm. Bar right straight over and down. Count of one as he went down on the mat. Nothing of any serious nature. Dutch bars the arm. Of course, you can't do that in amateur wrestling, but professional wrestling, nothing illegal about it. Nor is there in holding down the head with his leg the way he did. Bar back up on his feet. Fires Dutch across the ring. Another leapfrog. He went to go for the hip toss. Dutch! Takes him on a slide, two, and Jesse just kicks out. Mantel, and the power of Jesse, uh-oh. <laughs> Dutch says, go ahead, hit me. You lose if you do. We'll find out who's going to lose their temper. <laughs> Four and a half minutes gone now. Boy, what a match. Started off a little slow as they were feeling each other out, but... Uh, Good, clean action, but lots of it. Dutch giving him the uh, chin as a perfect target if he wants to shoot that right hand. Nothing would please him better than to have Barr lose his temper and blast him once. They tie it up and back to the corner again. Jesse Barr being told to break loose and nice, clean break. Dutch out of the corner. And we're how far into it, baby? We're now just past five minutes. Five minutes, ten seconds. Five right? minutes into it. And Mantell and Jesse Barr abiding by the rules completely. Barr whip across the ring. He goes under it. Whip for the drop kick, and he missed. Dutch covers him up. One, two. Uh -huh. Go ahead, hit me. Hit me. Jesse Barr 
having a little better thought of it now. He's the one that said Mantell couldn't go through a match without, uh-oh. That, that did it. Far bit right in Dutch's face, and Dutch slammed him with a right hand. We're in a brawl right now. Mantell's gonna be the loser. Told you Mantel, just a brawler. Jesse Barr psyching him when he spit in his face and Dutch instinctively just busted him. Uh, they're not worried about rules now. Mantel's already lost it. And Eddie Marlin bringing Terry Taylor, Bobby Fulton, Brown Sugar out here trying to pull these guys apart. Marlon telling Cornette, just stay back out of here. Mantell and Barr are locked in a death lock before finally the referee and Fulton get Jesse back. Taylor and Sugar and Dutch breaks loose, pounding Jesse upside the head. What started out to be a great wrestling match, Dave, has turned into just one of those Pier 6 brawls as Dutch has flipped his temper. Barr proved a point, but he had to spit in his face in order to prove it, provoking Dutch to smash him with that right hand. Taylor trying to pull Barr off along with uh, Bobby Fulton. Brown Sugar and the referee trying to peel Dutch back out of the way. Referee Eddie Marlin. Trying to get these guys apart. Cornette telling Barr to get out of there or Eddie Marlin is going to suspend him. So Cornette's trying to get Barr out of there now, but that's not doing any good. He's going back after Dutch. Yeah, he's reaching through the, the, the maze of legs up there. And Dutch just kicked him right in the head. He got him back. <laughs> Jesse Barr trying to slip loose again as Taylor and Brown Sugar holding. And there goes Dutch. He's loose. Well, Dutch may be getting in trouble here. It won't be the first time he's been in trouble. Okay, well, I'll tell you. What we're going to do is uh, take a break in here while they try to peel them apart. Let's take a break, and we'll, uh, we'll come back with more action coming up in just a moment get them apart. Uh, Jesse Barr and Dutch Mantell really strapping. Coming out right now, a young man that is a happy young man because he met his former tag partner, Terry Taylor, for the Southern Heavyweight Champ. And standing beside me now, the big Canadian, the new Southern Heavyweight Champ, Jacques Rougeau. Jacques well, Congratulations on it. Well, yes, it was you, uh, it was a win thank over you, a very, very tough opponent. Well, it's like I said before I came here in front of everybody, I said, and I was honest to Terry Taylor, I didn't go around nobody and hiding nothing. I came out here and I said, Terry Taylor, I'm going to wish you good luck because you're going to need it, and here's the result. Well, you do, in fact, have the championship in there. There was a point or two that I had a little concern about uh, some of the action that went on, but... If you will stay right here with me, Jacques. No, but I, let me uh, ask you one thing, too. There's one thing I've noticed this morning. I don't know if anybody noticed, but how come that I ain't got no music for me this morning? Like Terry Taylor, it was some days are diamonds and some days are stone. How come I ain't got no, like, maybe, uh, maybe dirty laundry, like kick him when he's up and kick him when he's down? Yeah, how about that? Huh? Okay, Jacques. Well, we'll uh, we'll have to see about that well, later on. Why don't you talk to Eddie Marlin about that? Maybe next time I come out, I'd like to have a little bit of music myself. Okay, fine. Well, you got the championship, but what I'd like for you to do is stand with me and look at some of the highlights of the what highlights was a dynamite match. match. Yes, and All I'd right. like for you to stand right here yes, because there's a couple of points that I want to talk to you about. So if we can, let's take a look at Terry Taylor and Jacques Rougeau for the Southern He's Heavyweight the title. Line, These are the highlights of the match. He is tough a test as he has faced. Oh, look at that move. Rougeau comes in at about 6'3 and a half, weighs 236. He's a lot of man, and that mare proved it, but look at Taylor. And Rougeau, no slow poke himself. Kick. Jock has a tendency to lose that temper, and uh, 
If he doesn't like what a guy does, he'll. Oh, look at here. Rujo going for a monkey flip. And Taylor, a super move. Rujo with a shoulder. Look at him time it. Oh, and he's right to his feet. And he's waiting on Taylor. Taylor holds up and says, no, sir. Not playing your game, my friend. And look at Rujo. And he busts him down with the right hand. Ah, the tempers are gone. Shoulder puts Taylor down. Jock leapfrog. Oh, and he had it wound. Man, I'm telling you, Taylor wound his clock on that one. Taylor out on the floor. He assured the referee he wasn't going out to hurt him. He just wants Rougeau back in the ring. He can't pin him on the floor. Goes out to help him up. And Rougeau, who was stunned down there. Yeah, I wanted to say right Taylor here. Said, okay. Uh, I was just trying to help you. That shock, and there's Rougeau the point where the Taylor Champion acted Jerry like a gentleman Taylor down there on the, right on the floor. The where was that when he busted state. my nose with Rougeau an elbow right in my face? Well, I, I understand that you thought that he slow. caught you with the point of the elbow. The referee didn't rule it as such. Uh, well, whatever so. you say, Lance. Whatever you say. All right, well, let's, let's just keep watching here. Spinning around, whipping on Taylor. The uh, stretch. Taylor, into you Rose both were going and looked like for the abdominal the stretch and there, Jock, the and then you wheeled Terry out on the floor, the uh, says, right no down onto day. the concrete Rujo at this point. And the referee, no, Paul Morton, is asking you back to uh, back up. And I assumed and at that point what you had done. Could I get your attention just one second here? You had told him that all you want to do is help him back. Did I misinterpret that or? Rude. Now look at that. Now that's well, the now point. I got I out of the ring. I got out of the ring to help him, and he was more. going towards the post. I tried to make him avoid the post, Rujo. and he ran into the post. Two right hand. And Jock. Well, everybody keep your eye on it from right here on. Now, uh, there's no question, Jock. We said you have great jumping ability. I've never seen a big man who could get up in the air the way you can. I did like Muhammad Ali said. I'm going to win it, and I did it. What what, what what else can I say? I predicted it, and it happened. And I told him, I came out here, and I warned him about my dropkick, and he had tried to teach him my dropkick, and he said, no, it ain't good, your dropkick. Well, let's see now how good it is. Let's just see right now how good it is. Okay, let's watch uh, right down uh, the Have short rows here. Come on, baby. On the end of this match. Let's, 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 on the road. Keep your eyes on this one. Looks like he's got watch this. Some problems of his own. Come on, Terry Taylor, Taylor get hard. up, big boy. Now watch that. Ooh, oh, right on. He nailed Taylor. Was that nice? He played that nice? hard. One, There's no two, question about it. One of the super moves the we've seen around there. There is no doubt. And I'm impressed by uh, that. Never mind that. Never mind that. He's a good contender. There's no doubt about that. Rujo He's a good contender. Oh, with that big paralyzing drop kick. Holds the belt up. I don't understand, Lance. People just is they love the champion. People loved it when I drop kick Sabu and they drop when I drop kick Apocalypse. Now I drop kick Terry Taylor and everybody seems not to like it. Well, I like it and that's what counts, right there. I. All right. I'm not sure that is what they maybe disliked about it. But again, congratulations. You are the AWA Southern uh, Heavyweight Champion, Jock. You have a match coming up with a tough youngster from Columbus, Ohio. Do you mind holding my belt, Lance? No, Just we'll keep it right, right here, here for you. Okay. Right here for okay. me. Okay. Thank you. There you go. Terry. Okay. No trouble now. We've had all the trouble today. Now, please ask you one question. I'd like to ask Jacques Rougeau one question. He's got one question. No fights, no fights. Can't hear you. Just listen up, if you would. Okay. I just want to ask him one thing. With all these people watching, how can you look at yourself in the mirror and say you're the Southern heavyweight champion? How can you do that? I'll tell you the truth. In front of all these people here and everybody watching right now, Lance Russell, 
I just think you're a sore loser, Fairdale. Hey, come on, Terry. It, it, it was uh, a good match. I think there's a lot of people that had a lot of questions like I did that there was a turning point in the thing that should have never happened. But uh, Lance, I'll tell you, I'd like to punch him out right now, but that wouldn't get me that belt back. No. I'm sorry for the trouble out here, but I... As you know, that belt means so much to me, and he took it the way he did. That drop kick didn't beat me. He bushwhacked me just like he did Bobby Fulton. When he hit my head on that post, I don't remember anything after that. All I know is I got back to that locker room. I didn't have that belt. Well, Jacques, if that's the way you want to go, that's okay, because when I went to that match, I thought you were my friend. We've been up and down the road together. We were buddies. We always talked about how we want to get up on top and, you know, do anything we can to get there, but we always want to do it by the rules. Well, you, man, you made your move. You did what you said you were going to do. Well, you don't seem to realize that I beat Sabu, who is the toughest, the meanest, the nastiest guy in this area who can punch and kick. But the thing is, I knew he would do that on the way in. I knew that Sabu would come at me with his hands, his feet, it doesn't matter. Well, Jacques, any time I get in the ring against you, I know how to go at you now. I'm going to come at you full speed. If I have to run your head into the post, that's okay with me. I don't mind at all. Anything I have to do to get to that belt, I will, because I'm going straight through you. Okay, Terry, good luck to you in your career. As Dave said, Jock seems to have kind of an attitude problem right now. We've got a lot more wrestling, a big eight-man tag match coming up later. We'll be back to it. <laughs>